Tuvinian Tajins belong to the larger ethnic group of the Tuvans. They've lived where the modern Republic of Tuva is located for a thousand and a half years, ever since the Turkic tribes came to the Sion Mountains from Central Asia and merged with the Ket, Samoyed, and Indo-European tribes. In the 13th century, the Tuvans were defeated by the Mongolians, and in the 18th century their land became part of the Chinese Empire of the Great Qing. The Tajins have been subjected to various influences for centuries while developing their own unique culture. Today, the old way of life is maintained by only 15 families. Nikolai Ak is the elder of a small nomadic camp. He and his cousin Svetlana Demkina are trying to restore the population of the Tajin reindeer. I'm counting the deer now. I'm writing the numbers down. At present, Svetlana, the owner of the herd, lives in town. In this family business, she is in charge of accounting. Nikolai and his wife Ludmila spend the entire year in the camping grounds. In winter, the deer are taken to the valley and in summer to the mountains. The most important time is approaching, the time to move from the winter settlement to the summer camp. Winter was harsh. There was a lot of snow. And it was difficult for the deer. That's why the calving happened later than usual. The does did not manage to gain weight. And the winter was longer than usual. Snow didn't melt for a long time. Ten deer died in the last year. Some got lost. Others were eaten by wolves. But calving was good this year. We now have 40 fawns. The Tajins will never tell you the exact number of deer that they have. It's considered to be a bad omen. The final count takes place on the 1st of January. Those who survive are counted. Spring arrives late to the taiga, but now it's time to go up the mountains. The midges make the deer suffer. But Aldin Ma, Nikolai's daughter, is still not here. Nikolai's sister is bringing her over. What did you buy in Kazil? Medicine for my mother. Don't forget to take warm clothes with you. Aldin Ma lives here in the village of Yi in Nikolai's sister's house when she was still attending school, and she always spent her summer vacations at her parents' camp. Aldin Ma can do everything. She has all the skills that a woman living in a reindeer breeding camp has. She can milk a doe, she can ride a deer so naturally as though she was literally born on a deer. Svetlana tells us everything about the girl, because the girl won't speak to strangers. Modesty and reserve are the main traits of a Tajin's character. They spend most of their lives amongst close friends and family. But soon, Aldin Ma will have to change her ways. She just entered the agricultural college. It was her choice to become a livestock specialist, and possibly after, a veterinarian. After graduation, she'll be able to help her parents and this occupation will become useful. Aldin Ma's parents don't know yet that their daughter entered the college. She will soon surprise them. The village of Yi is a so-called outpost of civilization. Most of the Tajins live in similar villages. Yi is located on the border of wild territory where the ancestors of the modern Tajins led nomadic lives. Now there's hardly anyone living in the taiga. Aldin Ma has spent her entire life here. That's why it's difficult for her to part with her friends. She's trying to talk to everyone while she still has a signal for her mobile. Svetlana had to climb up this river many times. She remembers that when she was a child, there were fires all along the banks of the river, the campfires of those Tajins who had come to take their children from school. They came from the village in dozens of boats, not only one boat, as is the case now. <laughs> Aldin Ma arrives with few other children. Now the reindeer breeding settlement turns into a summer vacation camp. The camp is only open to a few reindeer breeding families. In the past, the Tajins lived in the taiga and seldom left it, only when they had to exchange some goods or to take a woman to a hospital to give birth, as was the case with Svetlana's mother. My father came to get my mother and I. 
I was born in winter. That's why it was so hard to travel then. So they waited until I was six months old, and in May came to Yi and took us by deer. So since I was six months old until I started school, I spent all my time there, both winters and summers. People were used to living there then. There's an old tea drinking tradition before leaving for the taiga. The most important thing at this stage is to determine the route. There are neither road signs nor cellular communications in the places where the Tajins go to. Mountains and lakes have no names to navigate by. That's why Svetlana calls the village for the last time, while they still can get in touch with the camp over the radio. Hello. Could you please get in touch with my herdsmen and ask them where they're located at present? Please also ask them to wait for us and not to move before we arrive. The taiga is enormous. Even if you know the camp's location and you're only a kilometer away, you can walk around it for hours and not be able to find it. People sleep out in the open, and if it rains, there's nowhere to find shelter. The Tajins will have to spend around 12 hours in the truck, which will be riding over the bumpy roads of the remote taiga. But small children, in whose veins the blood of the nomads flows, easily endure discomfort, and it seems that they can even find this hard journey fun. <laughs> Within a single year, the Tajins relocate about 20 times. The deer have to move constantly in search of new pastures. Nikolai promised to wait for Svetlana for one more day, but the decision was not easy for him. The lichen that the reindeer eat is running short in this pasture. What's more, the Siberian elks have turned up here. It may sound strange, but an elk, whom an average city dweller can hardly distinguish from a domestic reindeer, is like a predator for the Tajins. The elk is taller and thinner than our deer. They differ a lot in their character, too. During rutting season, you have to tie the domestic reindeer up because the wild deer turn into proper predators. They are an enemy to us, similar to a wolf or a bear. They can take a few deer away from the herd at once. But once the rutting season is over, the wild deer leave, and then a reindeer breeder can let his deer out to the pasture. Every reindeer breeder has to be able to protect their pastures from predators. Hunting is also a source of providing for oneself. In contrast with regular hunters, northern people are allowed to hunt for game throughout the year. It's hardly possible to survive in the taiga without a gun. That's why the Tajins learn how to use it at an early age. It's time for Artish, Nikolai's grandchild, to learn the skill. Judging by the faces and noises he's making, Artish did not particularly enjoy the first shooting session. But it's obvious that a good hunter is growing up in the family. Have a look. You hit a spot just to the left of the notch. You had to aim here, right in the center. So you missed by this much. Her parents haven't seen Aldin Ma for over six months, and of course the first thing they ask is whether she entered the college. Yes, she entered the agricultural college. She'll be a livestock specialist. She'll work here. It seems like nothing can disrupt the smooth flow of life in this reindeer skin tent. Large celebrations and vivid emotions are not for the Tajins. They drink tea and talk quietly until the early hours of the morning. They have a lot to discuss. Nikolai and his wife and another couple spent the entire winter in the nomadic camp without any means of communication with the outer world, other than an old radio. That's why they only hear the news semi-annually when meeting with their relatives. However, even the arrival of guests and long nightly talks don't interfere with the morning milking. They only have half an hour from the first signs of sunrise until the midges wake up. The women get down to their business. In 
In those months, the midges virtually drive the deer mad. That's why they can only be milked in the morning when the insects are not yet swarming around them. But how do you make the does return to the camp at sunrise? They are grazing there freely. The Tajins know the secret to bringing them back. Every night before the milking, they tie the fawns to long poles. Following their instincts, the mothers return a few times a night to check on their babies. They come in the early morning too, just in time for the milking. Meanwhile, Nikolai makes fires all around to ward off the midges. It gives them a few minutes to milk the deer. Then the deer are set free to go and tend to their fawns. The symbiosis works very well. There is enough milk for both people and the fawns. While the grown-ups are milking the does, the young ones prepare the deer to go and fetch the things left on the hill during the night. The Tajin's ancestors started riding deer at least 2,000 years ago, and they saddled them in this manner. This saddle is used for riding deer. This rope is for steering. You pull it to guide the deer. This saddle is called Angarjak in Tuvinian. Here, people learn to ride deer even before they learn to walk. There are special saddles for babies. A birch bark cradle was attached here. Here, they made something to cover the baby against the rain or sun out of crisscross twigs. In the past, a reindeer skin tent resembled a proper house with its opulent interior and comfort. Today, those homes are more like camping tents made from plastic but they still maintain the traditional design. A tent was covered by birch bark in the summer. A special technology was used that we don't know of. We have forgotten it. It had to be boiled for a long time, then cut and sewed. It's easy to transport birch bark in summer. You can roll it into a tube and mount it over deer. And in winter, it's skins, reindeer skins. The first time the culture of the Tajins was under threat of extinction was at the start of the Soviet epoch. There was a real hunt for the shamans. Whole communities who have survived for thousands of years were destroyed, replaced by collective farms, totally dependent on civilization. They collapsed together with the Soviet Union. All the reindeer breeders moved to the city then, abandoning their herds. That's when the Tajin's culture was on the brink of extinction for the second time. Sometimes when I come here and see the place where my parents, my grandparents and great-grandparents lived, I think that if one of them could see what was happening now, they'd be terrified. There are very few deer left. The traditions are being lost. People used to be one with nature and the deer. These days, the reindeer breeding is only maintained by a few enthusiasts like Svetlana Demkina and her family. Svetlana's husband was Russian, but it was his idea to revive the tradition. It was my husband's idea. Frankly, I was against it. He told me, how can you watch while everything is disappearing in front of your eyes? Your whole life, the life of your ancestors are connected to the deer. You have to do something about it. So, he persuaded me. I told him, I don't know. If we buy them, we'll invest all we have. We'll have nothing left. You must be prepared for it. Will you regret it later? He replied, no. It was really a relief to me. No means no. We bought 50 deer. A year later, we only had six left. We looked at each other, but he had said no. The couple decided not to give up, and they succeeded. The herd started to grow. Vasily Demkin died a few years ago, but Svetlana continues her ancestors' cause, which became her husband's cause. Now, the herd consists of 185 deer, and Svetlana wants it to be given the status of a breeding livestock farm. This status will allow her to get help from the local budget. We used to work with the blood differently before. It's problematic now because we need refrigerators to store it or special thermoses. And in summer, that's impossible. Now, the easiest way is to cut off the tip of the ear and put it in alcohol. 
in a test tube. And then we send this to Moscow to the All Russia Research Institute of Animal Breeding in Dubrovitsa. And they research it there. Nikolai has spent his entire life with the deer and knows everything about them. But this is the first time that he's performing this procedure. He is ready to learn new things to retain and expand his herd. It doesn't make any sense to stay in the taiga without the deer. More often than not, when talking to people about their national identity, they will mention their language, religion, and traditions. But for the Tajins, deer are the core of their national identity. If it weren't for the deer, they'd have been ordinary Tuvinians and would have blended in with the urban residents. Everything is connected to the deer, including our nature and history. The century-old history, which people remember, the memory of their parents. It feels stronger when you are in a nomadic camp. When you see those paths, some of them overgrown, others still passable, you feel a part of it. Despite the harsh winter, spring has turned out to be good. The fawns have grown up in time for the first relocation. Aldin Ma brought good news to her parents. In a few years after graduation, she'll come back to the camp as a livestock specialist. In the morning, the breeders will dismantle the tent and head for the mountains. And it's a good reason to celebrate. Summer is coming to the ancient land of the Tajins.